Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher. Welcome to Not Perfect Zen, and welcome to days 19 and 20 of Inktober 2022. These are some hashtags you can use. This is what we've done so far. 6, 12... 16, 18 so far. So today we're doing 19 and 20. And with all of these, I'm using a Micron 01, a graphite pencil, a blending stump, and sometimes an eraser. All right, today's patterns. Oh, I'm using two by two inch tiles. There is an introductory video with other information in it about these tiles and about Inktober. Um, let's get started. Today's patterns are Tag by Zentangle and Walk the Line by Chris Titus. And I haven't used either one of these very much. And so I was happy to learn more about them and play with them. So the first one, tag, is one of the original 102 patterns that were made by Zentangle. And um, what's interesting is that I could only find one step out for that. Um, well, actually two, there's one in my Zentangle Zenthology that I got at seminar. And then there was there's one on the Tangle Patterns website. And the one for the Tangle Patterns website is more like this that you see here. But um, I found some other ideas of ways to do it. This is a little bit closer to what you see in the Zenthology. And um, these others are other ideas that I saw either on the internet or the Mosaic app. And I think the one that I want to do today is closer to this, of course, because it looks like... Uh, it's organic, but I want to show you, uh, let me do just a little bit of a border here, as if we were putting this on a tile, and the way that they show the step outs in the Zenthology from Zentangle is they so kind of start in a corner like this, and kind of a flux or petal shape. And then they do another one, and then another one on this side, okay? And then they just put these C shapes that go from the top of one to the top of the next one. So like this. Okay, and then you just keep doing that. I'm going to turn mine to the side a little bit. Okay, and then you would just keep going like that until you fill it in. And mine tend to get bigger as you go. Okay, and then you would just keep going in that space. And then the next thing is just a little seed shape almost down here at the bottom of each. Not very big. And again, this is from the 
Zentangle Zentology is how they did it. And you put these in that little area between the two petals here, so where they meet. And I'm going to guess the one would go there. And you could go ahead and put something down these edges. Okay, so there's how the step out looks from Zentangle. And like I said, the others that I've seen are coming just straight up and down like this. And then straight on top like that. And I think I've seen another pattern that does something very similar. And then they put a little bit bigger size on these. So again, you're not held any specific way that you have to do these patterns. Feel free to make them your own. But um, Start by learning the basic steps. All right, so let's get my tile. And I think on this one, I want to do something more like the flower here because I do love organic patterns and that one makes it more organic. And to start, I'm just going to put an orb in the center. Okay. And then we're simply going to add these petal shapes. And just turn your tile to make it comfortable for your hand. Okay, and then we're going to put some connections here between them. And this is a little bit different from the one that I did in my sketchbook. As with all of these patterns, just kind of play around with them and see what you like. And for this, I'm going to, on this next one, just come up a little bit more so I can fit more of these little petals on top. And just keep going till you come back around. Okay, and now we're going to start putting those little centers, and let's do these a little bit different. We're going to make them a little bit more like a fescue. And again, this is from me looking at what others have done. And 
in the description for each of my videos, I have some links to several other um, people on Instagram and YouTube that are doing the videos for Inktober. And I encourage you to go see what they're doing. This is the same basic strokes with a little bit different effect. That one's really small. <laughs> Okay, just keep coming around. Okay, so that one, like I said, is a little bit different. So just remember, you can do it however you like. I'm going to go ahead and add some shading along the bottom of these petals. And then just down here in each of these, just a little bit where the petals meet. This does kind of remind me of another pattern that I've seen. Oops, sorry. One of the Facebook pages that I follow is Tangle All Around. And um, they are also using homemade two inch tiles and uh, it's by Allison Hendon and <laughs> she calls them twinchies t-w-i-n-c-h-i-e since they're two inch she calls them twinchy I thought that was really cute she has her own inktober pattern list that is from her followers on that Facebook page. All of the patterns are by those people. So uh, very interesting to watch. I love to go through and look at the patterns that uh, she posts each week. And again, that was Tangle All Around. She has um, a couple of books that she's done that has patterns in it that I have shown in the past. All right, definitely different. And it looks different every time I do it. So uh, there you go. That is TAG, T-A-G-H by Zentangle. And the next one is Walk the Line by Chris Titus. And this is another one that I have not done very often, but uh, I really enjoyed playing with this one. And you can see here that you can use it as a border like this. You could do a full circle and make it into a flower. If you had a part of a tile where you just needed to fill in a little bit, you can use it as a filler. And um, I saw that someone had done this, I believe, in the Mosaic app. And I thought that was just really cute. And I had never thought to do it that way. And while waiting in line to get my grandchildren from school yesterday, I took this tile with me and made a border. And I did it this way to show you. And Chris Titus does this in 
her step out and examples. Um, if you point it in this way, this is how it looks. If you start like this and point your pattern out that way for a border, it looks like that. And it looks kind of cool together too. And when I went back and looked at her um, step out, she had done almost the exact same thing as an example. And let me show you basically how that pattern works. And we're, let's just start with a line for the bottom. And then you're just going to make a wavy line. And you could make it little waves like this or big waves, however you want to do it. It's going to work out. So let's just kind of do a little bit of a mix. Make some come out. So I'm a little bit shorter because it doesn't matter. Oops, sorry. It doesn't matter in the end how you do this. All right. And walk the line. This is the line that you're walking. So we're walking this line. And we're going to take a line up. And then we're going to go to the top and just come back down. Up, touch the top and come back down. We're not looking for this to be a certain width across or anything. We're just taking our time, going up and down, walking this line. And now that I've done it a few times, I've really enjoyed it because it's another one that is so easy to do. And it's very repetitive and very meditative to me. In fact, I uh, was almost honked at <laughs> in line yesterday because I was getting into it and I didn't notice that the line was moving. But the person behind me was very patient. Okay. So basically, that's all we're going to do is just keep going up and down like that the whole way across. And then you come back and you fill in this space above each one of these. And I was watching a video by another CZT, and she made a good point that, you know, you could start like this and then just do your lines like this and come back and round them off but to me that's not as relaxing as just doing it this way okay so again we're just gonna fill these in at the top you can add a little bit more above it if you want to if you want to have your line if you end up kind of like this, where your lines don't meet, then you're just going to fill that in also. But ideally, you're going to come up this same line and come back down. And then we're going to fill it in. If you make an oops like I just did, then... Just round it off. All right. That's the basic steps for walk the line. And it's so easy to do. And the one that I want to show you is a spiral. And I'm going to use my pencil first just to basically get my spiral started. And you're going to want to leave enough room that you can walk that line and add your pattern in there. Just keep coming around. 
And I'm just going to stop there for now. And then get my pencil. I mean, my pen. I'm sorry. That was my pencil I was using. And then I'm going to put my wavy line around. So. Again, you can make them a little bit smaller and closer together, or you can make it a little bit wider. It's not meant to be just a exact pattern. I'm not saying that right, but it doesn't have to all be the same. Okay, I'm going to stop there. And I'm actually going to start in the center and just start walking the line. And since we're in a circle, in some places it's going to be a little bit smaller at the bottom. Somewhere to petals. And just keep working your way around. I did one of these for practice and I really liked how it came out. And Chris has an example on her step out showing this in a spiral and I've seen where other people did it too and I just really liked it remember to breathe relax your shoulders turn your tile to keep your hand comfortable. This has a lot of possibilities. Like I said, it can be a border. It can be a flower. And the more wonky you make the line, I think the better it looks. Looks just more natural, more organic. Just keep coming around. Let's say I'm coming up that same line that I just put down. Okay. My grandkids are so excited that Halloween is almost here. My youngest granddaughter is five, and she's still trying to understand weeks and months because she wants to know how soon Halloween will be here. And then, how soon will Christmas be here? 
And I tried to explain, but she just doesn't get it. <laughs> All right, just keep going. And like I said, they don't have to be the same width apart. Okay, I'm going to stop there, and then I'm going to go ahead and erase that line where I can see it. Doesn't matter, but that's just the way I choose to do it. And now we're going to start filling this in on this edge. Like I said, you can add a little bit if you want a darker edge here. Okay, so just keep going. Oh, that was my front door, my sister's home. Okay. I really like how this changes as you keep going around and adding, filling it in. Okay. I'm also right next to the kitchen. So if you hear noise, that's what that is. Okay, just keep going. I'm going to add a little bit around that part just to give it a little bit more detail on top of each of these petals. have a little bit of music going in the other room and I hope it doesn't show up. It can be distracting. I tried music in one of my first couple of videos and found out very quickly that it can be uh, an issue, especially for people who might have hearing problems. So I've learned a lot since start to do videos, but I still like to keep them simple. I have found out that I enjoy it the most that way. Okay. So let's just go ahead here. Bring this on around. Okay, and then I'm going to fill this one in right here. 
And we have just a little bit here to fill in. All right. So to shade this one, um, on this one, I shaded along this bottom. And you could also add shading if you had a like a Renaissance tile, a tan tile or something that would be more noticeable. But you can also add shading on both sides like this and blend it in. Soften it, and then it ends up looking almost like it's curved along here. Okay, so for this one, I'm just gonna add a little bit of graphite at the bottom of each of these as I come around. And this is the nice thing about having a short pencil is it fits right into my palm and it's easy to get it pointed right at the line where I want to add the shading. It's better if you don't leave a space between. So for instance, if I accidentally came out like this, and then went back in and you have this area right here that doesn't have the graphite and that can be kind of distracting on your shading. So I'm gonna make sure I touch the line that I'm pointing my pencil at. Hopefully that makes sense. And just come on around. And then we're going to come back with our blending stump and soften that. And if you had done this on a bigger tile, you could come back and put some of the shading here on the outside. I'm just using what's left over on my blending stone. And just add a little bit. I could go ahead and add just very softly. I don't want to make that too dark. And This will make it look like it's curved a little bit, like I was showing you on that other one. It'll be easy down in here because it's such a small area. Okay. And then come back and soften that. And we want to keep this area in the middle clean. No graphite. And it just gives it a little bit of a contour look. All right, here we go. So there's walk the line. 
spike thrift stardust and a version of tag by Zentangle. And again, there's my sketchbook examples. And let's add on to it. Okay, here's our tags. All right, we have 20 done, 11 to go. All right, thank you again for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you would subscribe, if you like it, please hit the like button. That helps to support my channel and share with friends. Let them know that um, I have some videos to help them out with Inktober. And you don't have to do these just for Inktober, but it's to help you to learn some new patterns. I hope that you've enjoyed this. I hope that you'll come back again. Thanks again. I will see you again in two days. Bye.